Blah, 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 this is all going to be edited out completely, so you're not going to hear any of it, so I don't know why I'm saying it. My father-in-law doesn't know how to pour a beer. I watched him the other day and he had this magnificently huge head on his beer he just poured. Just dumped it straight down in the middle of the glass. Good man though, but I had to school him on how to pour a beer. Alright folks at home, what are we going to talk about? I'm trying something different tonight. Uh, I'm wearing a dark shirt and it's kind of concealing this camera that's sitting right here. Normally I have a boom mic above me aiming straight down and I'm always like looking up and making sure that my hands are in focus holding my object up at you, up at the camera up there, uh, whenever I want a close-up. So I'm trying something different this time. I've switched my cameras. Uh, I have the M500 right in front of me here. Also, I've got this wide-angle lens then right in front of me so you can see my hands uh, with the M500 and the Vivitar wide-angle on front of this uh, to help give me plenty of wide view here. And then I've got the R300 uh, considerable distance across the room there. Uh, instead of above me. Let's talk GoPro for a minute. Okay, so a couple of things came in, a couple of accessories uh, that I got for the GoPro that I want to talk about tonight. One of them is this, which is unfortunately uh, a $16 pretty much necessity for the GoPro um, that GoPro really should include. I mean, they're really nitpicking, charging this much for a camera and not including proper lens covers for it. Um, so you pretty much have to bite the bullet on this and get this little $16 unit, which is actually made for the 3 and 3 Plus, not the 4, and I'll show you why in a second. Major reason why I bought this, and the fact is that you just can't get this anywhere else uh, of decent quality. I know there's a few other manufacturers. Um, I want to move my light. I want to move my light. Hang on a moment. I want to move my light. Turn the horn and there's stuff behind it, and now i got to change that. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, you can still see it. Mother bitch chicken. Mother bitch chicken. There we go. No, there we go. It's good enough. This ain't Discovery Channel, and it shows. There's a couple of manufacturers of this kind of stuff on um, eBay, but none of it looked that great in quality. So, this goes on the front of your waterproof case. Because if you scratch this waterproof case, get a bad nick in the front of this bit of glass here, then you're gonna screw up your shots. So if your camera's gonna spend a lot of time in this waterproof case, then you really have to get this little cover. The next thing you get in here is a uh, individual lens cover so that if you had your camera out of its waterproof case, um, say you're using your camera in the um, little plastic holder for the GoPro, I forget what it's called now. Um, then you can just take this lens cover. That fits right on there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Did you guys just catch that? The... How did that happen? The little metal frame just was shifted out from the GoPro. And I won't... I don't think I could get it to repeat that. Uh, I just looked at this and this little lip here is looks like it's just barely clamped on the front of the GoPro and um, it was actually moved out a little bit right there. That's annoying. If you guys ever uh, know anybody that had a um, an old Texas Instrument TI-99 4A computer, it kind of looks like the GoPro Hero 4. It was black on the bottom and it had a um, kind of a thin metal uh, top to it uh, above the keyboard that um, if it got something caught it or it, it could bend and, and pull up on one side. So I have a funny feeling this is going to be an issue with this Hero 4 at some point. Something's going to catch. See that? Yeah, I can get it to do it. So look at that. See how I can pull at that a little bit? Uh, something's going to catch that and rip this little cover right off the front of this camera. That's $500 of craftsmanship for you. See that? That's what was happening right at the top here. That was separated a little bit off this. I just pushed it back on. This guy, it's a little glass um, protector filter for your lens. It's kind of a bit of rubber uh, around the lens here, so it accepts these little filters nicely. So there you have a nice little lens cover if you're in fact shooting uh, like this. It's a nice little lens cover there. 
Uh, next, for $16, you get a duplicate um, side panel for your port, and the potential to lose it is pretty good. So, you got to spare one of those. And then finally, for you Hero 3 and 3 Plus folks, this is a battery cover for the back door. Uh, of course, the GoPro 4 doesn't use that anymore. The battery is now um, held in the bottom here. I feel like he's completely protected. And then I can uh, have my little lens cap. It looks pretty goofy, right? But if I drop this down a flight of stairs or on some concrete or something, I'll know that, uh, um, you know, I'll get some knacks and hits on the corners and stuff. But uh, my um, glass covering in front of the lens is protected. So there's some third-party manufacturers of this kind of stuff, but um, I wouldn't skimp. Just pay the 16 bucks. GoPro should include this for free. Shame on you, GoPro, for not giving this little packet away. Uh, hope you rot in billionaire hell. Okay, next thing I picked up is the microphone adapter for the uh, GoPro. One of the main reasons why I got the um, GoPro Hero 4 Black over the Sony AZ-1 is I wanted to be able to plug in my own microphone, specifically a lav mic, uh, when I've got my GoPro mounted on my hat. In the waterproof case, you can't hear crap. You can, you'd have to yell to be able to hear the sound through the waterproof case. The skeleton back, I don't know. I'll try it in an um, upcoming video. I'll try the skeleton case. Uh, versus no case uh, versus the mic adapter. I'll do its own special video for that. So anyway, I wanted the ability to put a lav into my GoPro and run the lav like right next to my mouth or clip it kind of right here on my hat brim, which is probably gonna what I'm gonna do. So my next accessory, which I won't be opening because I will be sending it back, uh, I ordered the skeleton housing and they don't officially have a skeleton housing for the 4 yet uh, on GoPro's website. Maybe they're coming out with it at some point soon. I didn't realize a lot of stuff that fits the 3 and 3 Plus will fit the 4, but uh, when this arrived, this is the I realized by mistake that this is the GoPro 3 uh, skeleton housing. And I obviously wanted a skeleton housing uh, for shooting 4K. I would not shoot 4K with your waterproof case on, guys and gals, because it's going to get hot and it's going to cook itself in there. So you want a lot of air vents and ways for air to escape. Um, so I would definitely use the skeleton housing or the frame, uh, the plastic frame for the GoPro. You know, I like this because uh, it's got the top and front button. It doesn't have the side button like it should. Uh, for the proper GoPro 4, and it's got this old-style um, lens covering with the with the uh, with the screws in it, and you can pretty much tell from just holding this up there that the um, the GoPro 4 is smaller, and I don't think it's going to fit in here, and I, I think this thing's clunky and ugly. And um, there's definitely, I think there's definitely a, a skeleton case. And look, it's got the old hinge on the top, which some people like it better, but, you know, I, this one's fine for me. It's easier to open, to me, because you have to slide that little guy and then pop that off. And to me, just opening that is just as easy. So uh, this was 30-some bucks. And um, I had an epiphany. Ba -ba -bum. When I uh, decided to return this, I thought... I wonder if there's anybody making uh, a cage of some kind, maybe for the GoPro, in which I can mount other accessories to, because they do make, for these um, waterproof cases, they make a um, kind of a, a, a filter holder that you can stick on there and then get a neutral density or a circular polarizer filter. Oh, so there's the, by the way, there's the dead cat I ordered. Um, I'll be linking this. Uh, when it comes in, I'll do a bit of, um, uh, it's for the um, the Rode Smart Lab, but I think it's going to fit my mic anyway. Okay, Camerar makes something like this uh, that Cheesy Cam has and um, reviewed, but it's eighty bucks, a hundred and hundred and ten if you buy the little grip for it. Uh, but this is forty bucks, and it's the aluminum alloy protective housing case shell for GoPro Hero Three Three Plus Black. They say it'll work for the four. Some some manufacturer chimed in and said no. Then another guy. Who manufactures this? China and said yes, so cross our fingers, it'll work for the GoPro um, 
here before. Uh, you can take a little look at it, it looks really cool. Uh, you can mount a cold shoe on top. You can mount a, it's got tripod threads right there and on the bottom. Let's see, let's see if there's another picture of it. And then how you, you put your GoPro through the back and then you tighten this little knob there um, in order to, in order to, which pushes a little block in there to hold the GoPro tight. And we'll see how well that works. And this comes with uh, a lens cap and a little uh, wrist strap and there's the cold shoe adapter, there's the GoPro adapter that goes on the bottom uh, and the screw for is right there for the cold shoe and the two screws to screw the um, GoPro adapter to the bottom. So it's made of aluminum, uh, it looks really good. As I said it's $39 and it's got lots of holes in it to let the heat out and lots of holes in it for me to get access to stuff. My plan was to just drill a hole in here in the side of this case to get at the, um, the mini USB so that I can put my adapter in there and maybe stick a little gum around it and seal it back up again. Uh, but these are kind of expensive. These are $50 for these uh, waterproof cases. So, so maybe I might still do that. I don't know yet. Um, I'm ending up just, you know, this is completely waterproof and just drilling one little hole in there. Uh, because this is not at all waterproof. Um, but one last thing I do like about it is that's a 37 millimeter threaded area that the lens pops through and you can get a, a cover, you know, just a, a, a clear filter to protect the lens or you can get a neutral density or circular polarizer, circular, circular neutral density. The difference between circular and just regular means you can turn it. it means you can actually dial it to different um, bits of um, polarization. Circular polarizer just takes glare off everything. So water, glass, uh, the sun glare and kind of minimizes it, whereas the ND filter uh, actually darkens the image so that you can open your iris up uh, and stop lower in order to get a narrower depth of field uh, when you're out in the direct sunlight, in the bright sunlight. You don't want to mess around with glass that you put in front of your glass. Don't go cheap on filters because they talk about this in the DSLR world all the time. You buy a $800 lens and you stick a $30 filter in front of it, you're putting a cheap piece of glass in front of a very expensive piece of glass and you're effing with your IQ. You're screwing up the quality of the image. Maybe you won't notice it until you start, uh, until you zoom all the way in and start pixel peeping, but you are hurting it. So here's the, I ordered this Hoya 37 millimeter NXT circular polarizer. I paid 40 bucks for it, but it's, um, it's thin. And I think that in front of this ultra wide GoPro, uh, any kind of thick polarizing filter is going to show up as vignetting in the corner of the shot. This uh, Hoya, which is low profile, uh, so it's half the thickness of other um, or, or variable uh, polarizing filters, uh, hopefully will not, but it might still. So this has been Damien for DSLR Nerd, and as always, subscribe to my channel, check out my blog at dslrnerd.com, and thank you for watching.